Today, I'm going to show you how to make a photography website step by step. So if you follow on, we're going to make this beautiful photography website together that's going to be fast, beautiful, and responsive. Also in this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get more visitors to your website, clients, and revenue. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Lewis here from WebsiteThink.com and I'm really excited to bring you this tutorial on how to make a photography website. So instead of me carrying on, let's get stuck straight into our first step. Step one is to find ourselves a domain name and a web hosting provider. So for this, I personally use Bluehost and I've been using them for close to five years and I currently have dozens of websites hosted with them. So I'm going to be using Bluehost in this tutorial and I'll also put a link down below in the description and currently Bluehost has a really awesome discount. I believe it's about 50 or 60% off and they also give you a free domain name when you sign up. So that's a big thumbs up for Bluehost. And just as a quick disclaimer, if you do decide to use the link down below in the description, I actually get a referral from Bluehost, but this comes at no extra cost to you whatsoever. Uh, but it really does help me to keep making these videos and putting this content out there. So if you decide to use the link down below in the description, thank you. If not, that's totally cool. We can get stuck straight into this tutorial. So to follow on, you can click the link down below in the description and this will take us to Bluehost and then we can go ahead and click get started now, which will take us to the pricing options. And right here we have the three options. I always recommend the choice plus as this allows us to host unlimited websites and we also have unmetered bandwidth. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. And now we can go ahead and put in a new domain name of our choosing. And then just at the end, we can select the domain suffix. I personally always use .com as that is now the worldwide standard and it's what people expect to see when they visit your website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then I'm gonna put in my personal information and I'll just skip down the bottom so you don't have to see this. Now we have the yearly options. So I'm just going to go with the one year option, uh, but just keep in mind this does increase the price. Uh, so if you'd like to save a couple of dollars, uh, you can actually select the 24 or 36 month option, uh, which does bring the price down significantly. And now I'll just scroll down to package, package extras and I'll deselect this one as this is not needed. And now we see the total price for the hosting. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put in my credit card details, which I'll obviously block out for privacy reasons. Then go accept terms and conditions and click submit. So if this has gone through successfully, then we'll just get a welcome to Bluehost and a congratulations page. So now we can go ahead and create our password. So I'll go ahead and put in my password for my new Bluehost account. And then I'll go, I've read and agree, and then I'll go to next. And right here we have themes that Bluehost recommends. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this as we'll be making our own. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click start building. Step two is to now download some new plugins to our brand new WordPress website and also adjust some of the settings within WordPress. So let's get stuck straight in. So once you click the blue start building button, this will bring you to your brand new WordPress website. So this is called the dashboard of WordPress and this is where we can edit multiple things like pages, posts, the theme, settings and heaps of other awesome stuff. So let's have a quick look at our website and you can easily do that by going to the top left hand corner and just clicking on your website name. So I'll go ahead and click that. And this is our website that we have so far. Um, there's nothing here at the moment really because there's no theme, there's no posts or pages, and there's no plugins as well. So we'll be adding that shortly, but before we do, we'll just uh, adjust some settings and add some plugins. So we can go back to our dashboard by clicking the WordPress logo on the top left hand corner. So I'll go ahead and click that now. So firstly, I'm just going to adjust some of the plugins. So I'll go to the plugins on the left hand side. And right here, we can see the current plugins that we have installed. So by default, WordPress automatically installed some plugins for you. 
So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete these top two as we won't be needing these. I'll delete this one too. Click OK. And I'm actually going to keep Jetpack as this is a really helpful tool and plugin. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Activate. And then I'm going to click on Setup Jet Jetpack. So I already have an account with Jetpack across all of my WordPress websites. So I'm just going to go ahead and approve, um, but you'll have to create a new account. It only takes about 30 seconds and it's completely free. So I'm just going to go ahead and click approve. And once you do click approve, they'll actually try and sell you some of their premium options. But if you just scroll down, they actually have a really good free version, which I recommend. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. Now, there we have it. We have WordPress and Jetpack connected, and that's all set up. So now we want to go ahead and install some new plugins. So to do that, we'll go to the left-hand side again, and just go to Add New. So now we're going to search for a new plugin on just the top right-hand corner here, and I'm going to type in Really Simple SSL. And this plugin will just redirect any traffic from HTTP to HTTPS. And, there was, and this will also activate the SSL certificate on our website. Uh, that's also known as the green padlock that you may see in the browser time to time on websites like Google and Facebook. And this just tells visitors that your website is secure. So I'm just going to go ahead and install. And then I'm just going to go ahead and activate. And to activate the SSL certificate, we just have to go ahead and click this blue button. And now we have a brand new SSL certificate on our photography website. So now I want to go ahead and just add one more plugin. So from the screen, I can just go up to the top and then click Add New. And now I'll search for a plugin called Yoast SEO. Now this is a plugin I use on all of my websites. It's really helpful for SEO and Google rankings. So I'll install that now, and then I'll activate. So we'll be using this plugin um, a bit later on in the posts and pages section of this tutorial. Um, but for now, that's all of the plugins out of the way. So now we can just go to the settings of the website and just adjust a few minor things. So we can go to settings on the left-hand side. And then firstly, I'm just going to go over to the right and up to general. And all I'm going to change here is the site title and the tagline of the website. So for this one, I'll go Will the Photography. And you can use whatever your brand name or your photography uh, portfolio or business name is. And then I'll just change the tagline. And then I'll go down and hit save changes. And the next setting I want to change is in the permalinks. So again, I'll go to settings on the left hand side, go down to permalinks, and right here, WordPress automatically uh, defaults to day and name. But as you can see here, it's quite a messy structure if someone was to visit your website. So instead of website.com slash wedding photography, you have the day and the date and the name, it's just too complicated and it doesn't really help in the search results. So what we want to do is go down to post name and click on this. And this is just a much simpler and easier kind of post structure and it's what people are used to seeing. So we're going to go ahead and click that and then go down to save changes. So now that's done, we can go ahead and create some pages and posts for our website. So I'll just go back to the dashboard on the top left hand corner. Step three is to add some pages and posts to our brand new photography website. So these pages and posts allow people to view our portfolio and contact us and also see an about page about who we are and what our business is about. And also we're going to add some blog posts to our website as it just adds a bit of extra professionalism and it also helps people on Google to actually find your website. Uh, so let's get stuck straight into that. So firstly, I'm going to add a page to our website and we'll be using these pages as the portfolio section of the website. 
So I'm just going to go to the left hand side and go to pages and automatically WordPress um, adds these two pages uh, but we won't be needing these so we're just going to go ahead and trash these and then I'll trash this one as well just by clicking trash and once we have those out of the way we can then go up to the top and click add new so here we are in the pages section of WordPress so I'm just going to go ahead and put in the title for one of my pages and I'll just go ahead and put wedding photography as I want to showcase the wedding photography aspects of my portfolio and then I'm just going to go down here and click on this and then I'm just going to go to the left hand corner and click the plus icon and then I'm just going to go to gallery and I already have some images uploaded just to save some time on this tutorial but if you want to upload your own images you can click simply go to upload and just as a pro tip I highly highly recommend just compressing your images whether they're PNGs or JPEGs and this just really speeds up the website and it stops the kind of stuttering that you may see on mobile or desktop so to avoid that I highly recommend using compressed images as it makes your website a lot faster uh, but anyway I'm going to go to media library and then I'm just going to go ahead and select the wedding photos that I've already uploaded. So if I just scroll down, I'll click the wedding photos. And I'll just get myself out of the way there. And then I'll go create new gallery. And then I'll go to insert gallery. So right now we have a beautiful gallery installed on our wedding photography page. Um, but just to make this a little bit more pretty, I'm just going to go to the left hand side here and click on this little icon. And then if I click on this, we then have an option to go tiled gallery. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then instantly this rearranges the look of the photos and the layout. So I personally prefer this option as I think it looks really, really beautiful. So if you want to have a look at how this page is looking so far, I'm just going to click on preview and this will open up a new page. Now right here we can see our brand new page and the photos that have been added. And another cool thing about this tiled gallery is if I actually click on one of these images, it's actually going to go into a slideshow. So this is a really good benefit for potential clients or visitors to really have a good look at the quality of your work. And then you can just exit out of this. So this page is looking good so far, but remember we haven't added the theme yet, so it's not looking really pretty like we want it to. So if I just scroll down a bit further, um, we actually have the description of the page. So this is the title that we added and it's the tagline which we edited in the beginning of the tutorial. So if you want to go ahead and edit this, you can actually click on edit snippet and you can edit that to your own um, liking and this really does help in the Google rankings um, to find, help people find your website. And then you can also go down and put in a meta description and this is just a further explanation of your work and the um, page itself. So I'll leave this as is for now. Now I'm just going to go to the top right hand corner and click on document. And again I'll move myself over here. And I just want to set a featured image for this page as once we do install the template we're just going to get a really nice full image that's going to cover the whole screen uh, once people visit it. So I'm just going to go set featured image. And again I already have some photos uploaded so I'm just going to go ahead and click on one of these. I'll select this one, click select. Now that's pretty much it for this page. I'm happy with, its, with how it's looking. So then I'm just going to go ahead and click publish. And then I'm just going to click publish again. So now we've submitted our first page for our photography website. So I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and publish two more pages following these same steps just to speed up this tutorial. So I'll see you in just a moment. So I've now finished the portfolio pages. So now we can move on to the contact page about 
and frequently asked questions page. So let's get stuck straight into that. So now we have our portfolio pages done. I then want us to move on to the contact page and some other extra pages that we can add onto the website which helps people contact us and navigate um, more um, freely around the website. So to begin, I'll just go again and go to add new. And for this page, I'm going to be using it as a contact page. So I'll go ahead and just put in contact. And up below, I'll just put in some copy that I've already pre-prepared. So I'll go ahead and paste that in now. So now we have the copy of our website. I've got a brief description. I've got email, phone, the location. And I've also got a section for a contact form which we'll add in together now. So if I just click here and then I hit return or enter, this will open up a new section. And then if I just click on this little plus icon, then I can search for items. So if I just type in contact, this will bring up the option for a contact form. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the form icon. And then I'm just going to go down and click add form. So straight away, it just imports a form straight into the contact uh, page. And right here, it's just a really clean and simple way of people to contact you. And um, they can put in their name, their email, their website, and a brief message as well. So I can go ahead and preview this page by going to preview. And again, this will open up a new page. And right here, we have a very simple contact page. Uh, with everything someone would want to know about the business. So that's looking good so far. So before we publish this, I'm just going to go to Documents and again put in a featured image. So I'm going to select a photo. I'll just move myself. It's here somewhere. This one here. And then I'm just going to go Select. Now this is good to publish, so now I'm going to go ahead and click publish on the top right hand corner and then again click publish. So those are our pages out of the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a couple of extra pages like the about page and the frequently asked questions page. So these are following the exact same steps as these ones we just made. So I'll see you in just a moment. Alright, so I'm back in the dashboard and I've finished those extra pages. So I can quickly go and have a look at those by going to Pages. And then again, we can see the original portfolio pages we created. And then we can see the Contact page and also the Frequently Asked Questions and the About page I created just before. So now all of the pages are done. We can now move on to the Blog Posts section of our photography website. So as I said earlier, this really does just add a bit of extra professionalism to your website. And it also helps potential clients or visitors better understand what you do. And this is great for behind the scenes, photography shoots, um, photography gear, and so on. So let's get stuck straight in with that. So those are the pages done for our website. So now we want to move on to the blog post section of the website. And that's very easily done just by going to the left hand side and going to posts. So by default, WordPress automatically adds in an example post. So we're not going to need this, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Trash. And now to add a new post, I'll simply go up to Add New. And as you can see, this is very similar to the Pages section, and that's because it's pretty much exactly the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a blog title. And now I'm just going to go down to the bottom and just put in some content. I've already pre-prepared some, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in just to speed up this tutorial. So now I've pasted in some content, so now I can go ahead and actually add some images within this blog post. So say I want to put an image just below this paragraph, I'll just click here, then I'll click enter or return, and then there's a plus icon on the left hand side, so I'll go ahead and click that, then I'll go to image, and I'll go to my media library. And now I'll just select a wedding photo. So I'll put that one in, click select. And that's looking really nice so far. And again, I can scroll down to the bottom and I can change the uh, snippet and the description of this post as well uh, for SEO purposes. Um, but I'll leave that one for now. And the last thing I want to do is add a blog category 
and I also want to add a featured image. So this is easily done by going to document on the right hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the category. So if I just click here, this will bring up the category section and by default it automatically puts it on uncategorized, but I'm just going to move it over to blog. And if I want to add a new category, I can easily do that by going to add new category and I'll just go posts and I'll go add new category. And for this one, I only want blog to be selected. So I'll just go ahead and unselect these two. And now I'm going to go ahead and select a featured image for this blog post. So that's easily done by going to featured image and then clicking set featured image. And I'll use the same photo I used within my blog post just for some consistency. So I'll click on this one, select, and that's good to go now. And again, we can have a quick look at how it's looking by going to preview. And this will open up a new page. And right here we have our brand new blog post. And we have the featured image, but again, we'll change this shortly in the customized section of the theme. So if we scroll down, we see the text, the image, and so on. So if I'll just exit out of this, and again, I'll go ahead and add a few more blog posts in, uh, just so the website looks a bit more complete. So I'll see you in just a moment. So I've gone ahead and finished the blog posts for our photography website, and now we can move on to step four. Step four is to download a brand new WordPress theme and customize the design settings within the theme. So personally, this is my favorite part of creating a photography website. I really like to just make it look beautiful, responsive, and just make it something that someone will really love to visit and love to just explore and navigate around. So let's get stuck straight into that. To begin designing our photography website, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and install a brand new theme. So this is very easily done by going to the left hand side, going to appearance, and then just go down to themes. So for this photography website, I'm going to be using a theme called photo frame, one word. So I'll go ahead and search for that one now. And here we have the new theme that we're going to install. So I just want to go ahead and click install. And then I'll go ahead and click activate. So to have a look at our brand new theme, again, we can go to the top left hand corner and click on this, which will show us a preview of our website. So straight away, we can see the photography name of our website or business. And right here, we can see the blog posts that we added in earlier on, and they automatically generate on the front page. So this is a really drastic improvement so far but well, we can make this even better by customizing the settings of the theme. So this is very easily done by going back to the dashboard. And then I'm just going to go to appearance and then just go over to the right hand side and click on customize. So the first thing I want to do to this website is go to site identity. And this is where we can again change the site title if we choose to and again select the logo as well. Um, but for this one, I actually quite like this um, title as it's very minimalist and simple and it tells the visitor or potential client exactly what your website and photography business is about. So I'm actually going to leave this one as is and now I can go ahead and go back by clicking on this arrow. And now I'm just going to go to header media. Now this is my favorite part of this theme. We're just going to add some images and create a beautiful slideshow on the front page of the website. So I'm just going to go ahead and click add new image just on the bottom left hand corner here. Now I'm just going to go down to some photos and again I'll just move myself out of the way. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select and crop. And we can actually move this around and crop it to our own um, liking. So I'll leave this one as is. I'm going to go crop image and straight away we can see a live preview of the website and the image that we just updated. So if we scroll down, instantly this website is start, starting to look really, really good. So again, I'll scroll down and I'll actually add a new image so we can make this into a slideshow. So I'll go add new, I'll select another photo 
for this one, I'll click this one here. Go select and crop. And I'll just move this over just so this image is a bit more centered. Then I'll go crop image. And that'll just update. And as soon as we update this second image, these two arrows now appear. So now we can actually toggle between the photos on the website. And automatically these photos will slide after about 10 seconds, I believe. So I'm actually going to skip ahead and actually upload some more photos um, just to make this slideshow even more beautiful. So I'll see you in just a moment. Alright guys, so I've gone ahead and uploaded more images to our slideshow. So I'll quickly just give you a preview of how it's looking right now. So I can just toggle between the images and this looks really beautiful so far. And also a really cool thing about this theme is that if this logo is actually on a white background, it'll actually revert to black. So you can see it on either images. So that's a really nice touch. So I'm really happy with how this slide is looking. So now I can go ahead and click publish. And now that's saved. So again, I want to go ahead and click back. And again, I'll move myself out of the way. And if we just go down to the theme settings, now we can adjust the front page a bit further. So what we want to do here is go and click on these two boxes, display featured images and display featured pages. So what this will do is display a really nice featured image on the pages and the posts that people visit on our photography website. So the next thing we want to do is just scroll down and add a really nice um, portfolio section on the front page of our website. So here is the featured page headline. So I'm actually going to rename that to my portfolio. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the three pages that we actually made earlier on. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this. And then I'm just going to click on wedding photography. And again, food photography for the second option. And for the third option, I'll select travel photography. So now if we scroll down, we should add, we should see a new My Portfolio section right here. And that's looking super beautiful so far. So now you see this nice effect of when we hover the cursor, the images actually slightly uh, zoom in. So I can actually click on these and we can actually go further into the page. And right inside the page we have the nice featured image. And then if we scroll down, we get the nice tiled look as well. So that's looking really good so far. So now I can go ahead and publish this. So those are pretty much the settings done for this uh, design element. So I'm just going to exit out of this and go back to the dashboard. So now let's click on our website and have a proper look. So right here we have the slider and the name of our photography uh, business. And we can toggle through these images. Now we can slide down have a look at this My Portfolio section. Go down to the recent posts which we added earlier on. So this is looking really good so far, um, but we can actually add a few more things just to make this look even better. So now the next thing we want to do is go back to the dashboard, which is done on the left hand corner. And now we're actually going to go into a new segment of the dashboard. And this is widgets. So this is easily done by going to appearance and then going to widgets. Now the widget section of the uh, WordPress uh, settings allows you to add extra elements onto the front page or the sidebar or the footer of your actual website. So it's a really, really useful thing to learn within WordPress. So we're actually going to add an about me section on the front page. So we can go ahead and do that. So we're going to use these widgets here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in a photo of um, me, or it can be anyone. For this one, I'm just using a random photo that I got. So to add a photo, I can just scroll down, and then I can just go to image here. Now if I click and hold on to this, then I can move this around, and I can simply drag this back up to that widget section. And now I'm just going to go ahead and place that there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. So I've already got an image pre-prepared. So I'm just going to use this one. And again, I'll move myself out of the way. So if I scroll down, it automatically defaults to medium. But I actually want to use the full size of this image. So I'll just go to full size and then go add widget. 
Now, once I'm happy with that, I can just click on save. And then I can minimize this by just clicking this arrow here. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a text section next to the photo. So the next thing I want to do is just open up this widget section. Now, if I scroll down, I'll come across one called text. So again, I want to follow the same step and just click and hold. And now I can move this around and drag it back up. And again, I'll just plonk that in there. And I'll just go and paste in an About Me bio, which I've already pre-prepared. So I've gone ahead and pasted that in. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and save this. Now I'll go and minimize this. And now let's have a look at how this is looking on our website. So again, we'll go to the top left-hand corner to preview the website. So I'll start scrolling down. And right here we have a really nice about um, photo and a really nice about bio on our website. So this just adds a really nice personal element to the photography website. And again, if we scroll down, this is the same as we added before. So all I want to do is just add another section to the front page, and that will be a frequently asked section. So again, I'll go back to the dashboard. Then I'll go to Appearance, and then again Widgets. And we're just going to use this widget section here. So I'll open this one up. Then I'll go down, and again, I'll find the text widget. Click and hold and drag back up. Now I'll put that in there. And I'll actually put a title for this one. So I'll just go frequently asked questions. Now I'll go ahead and paste in some copy that I've already pre-prepared. So there's the content. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. Now I'll minimize this and again let's go back and have a look at how this is looking. So we've got the really nice front page image, the about section, the portfolio section of the website, frequently asked questions, and then again recent posts. The only thing that's missing now is actually the menu of the website which allows people to navigate. So that's the last part of the design. So let's go ahead and get stuck into that. So to get stuck into the menu, we just want to go again to the dashboard. And to begin with the menu, we just want to go to Appearance, and then just go down to Menus. So right here we have the menu section. And as you can see here, all of our pages have actually been put into this section. And that's because WordPress automatically does this just to save you some time, which is a big thumbs up um, from WordPress. Um, so I'm just going to leave this as is for now, as I first want to create a sub-menu so people can navigate through our um, portfolio more easily. So to do this, we want to add in a thing called a custom link. But first I'll just move myself out of the way. So by adding a custom link, this will allow people to navigate through the menu more easily. So if I just go to the left-hand side and click on this, and then I'll just highlight this, hit backspace, and I'm actually going to put in a hash or hashtag, and then I'm just going to type in portfolio. And then I can go ahead and click add to menu. And as you can see, this automatically adds down the bottom, but I just want to go ahead and drag this one back up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get my um, portfolio pages and then just drag them underneath. And I'll do the same for this one. Now to make this into a sub-menu, or a drop-down menu rather, all I want to do is simply click and hold and drag to the right-hand side. And as you can see, that just wants to click into place. So if I let go, that'll just place in there. And again, I'll do that for these two. Drag to the right, drag to the right. And now this will be a drop-down menu. And if I actually drag, click and drag the portfolio, all of these elements will actually move because now they're connected together. So I'll leave that as the, uh, there for now. Now I'll move the contact down the bottom and I'll leave that as is. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and create the menu. Now one last thing we need to do in the menu is just go down and click on main menu as well. Sometimes this doesn't automatically um, join itself, but if it hasn't, you just want to go ahead and click create menu, 
and then save menu. So to view our website that's finished now, we can go back and have a look. So there we go guys, we now have the menu there and if I go portfolio, this is a really nice drop down and now I can navigate between my portfolio pages. So let's go down to wedding photography. If I just scroll down, we have the really nice tiled look. I can click on any one of these images and again this will create a slideshow. And again, if I want to go to other areas within the portfolio, I go back here, go down to food photography. And again, we have the really nice tiled look. And now I can go home by just clicking the Wilbur photography. And right here, we have a beautiful looking professional photography website that any visitor or potential client will love to look at. And this is a website that I'll be proud to share with my friends and family as well. So that wraps it up guys. Hopefully this video on how to create a photography website has been helpful for you. Um, if you've actually followed this tutorial to the very end, please put a link down below to your very own website and I'd be really happy just to look over your website and give you any tips or tricks on maybe how you can improve the speed, the look, and just other things that I may come across. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please put a comment down below in the comment section and just let me know what you'd like to see as I really am passionate about creating tutorials like this uh, for new website beginners as I really believe that there are certain ways that you know just speed up the process and the learning curve so if this video has been helpful please hit that subscribe button and I can't wait to see you in the next video thanks for watching